Hey guys, Corey here with another concept video. Today, it's all about cells. In this video, we'll take a look at the structure of the cell membrane through the fluid mosaic model. Membranes are awesome, so let's get started. The cell membrane separates the cell from its surroundings and is found in all living cells. It controls the entry and exit of materials in and out of the cell and has a wide range of other important roles in cell communication, cell adhesion and the binding of hormones. Now the cell membrane structure is very important to its function. Cell membranes consist of two layers called a bilayer of phospholipid molecules and two different types of membrane proteins. One's called integral proteins which are permanently in the bilayer and peripheral proteins which tend to move in and out temporarily and are not a permanent part of the membrane. There are also a host of other types of molecules which embed themselves in the membrane, which will not feature in this video. Let's now take a closer look at phospholipids. Phospholipids consist of a phosphate head and two fatty acid tails. The cell membrane consists of two layers of these phospholipid molecules arranged with their phosphate head groups on the outside and their tails projecting inwards, hence the name phospholipid bilayer. The structure of this bilayer is a direct result of the property of phospholipids. The heads are what we call hydrophilic and are happy to be in a liquid medium, whereas the fatty acid tails are said to be hydrophobic and repel water. This property results in the bilayer we see in membranes as the tails are effectively huddling together to try and stay away from the water. Now that we understand a little about phospholipids, let's take a look at some of the proteins which embed themselves in the membrane. The first type are called receptor proteins. These proteins have shapes that are complementary to specific hormones and therefore allow for the communication of messages. Many hormones transported in the blood can only bind and act on cells if these cells have complementary protein receptors on the outside of their membranes. A good example is growth hormones, which bind to specific growth hormone receptors. When this binding occurs, signals are sent into the cell, initiating cellular changes. Human growth hormone stimulates things like growth, especially in childhood, strengthening bone and increasing muscle mass. The second type are called cell adhesion proteins. These integral proteins can stick out and bind to specific protein molecules in adjacent cells or attach to the cytoskeleton. This in effect anchors a cell and or the cell membrane in place. The third and final type are movement proteins such as channel and pump proteins. These proteins either allow for the passive movement of molecules or use energy to actively move molecules in and out of cells. You can think of these molecules as either doors, in the case of channel proteins, or like the airlock on a spaceship, in the case of pump proteins. These proteins will be discussed in more detail in your movement through membranes concept video. Well, that's it for cell membrane structure. I hope it helped and check back soon for more concept videos.